All right, guys, so you remember the Dan Case A4 V3 build that I assembled a couple weeks back? Well, it's back again, and the CPU, if you guys recall last time in part two, is overheating. We've got a Ryzen 7 2700X in here, eight cores, 16 threads. I believe it was hitting 88 degrees Celsius at the time, and uh, that was clocked at four gigahertz running completely stock, but it's just a little too hot for my liking. So today, what I wanted to try to do is swap that out for a Ryzen 7 2700. It is running at a lower base and boost clock, however. Uh, the other difference here, though, is a lower TDP, 65 watts on the 2700 compared to 105 on our 2700X. So hopefully that lowers the temperatures quite a bit with our 92 millimeter liquid AIO from Asatec. This is a 545 LC, and it's uh, pr probably the only 92 millimeter liquid AIO that you can purchase right now, at least in the US from what I can tell. If we overclocked the Ryzen 7 2700 to the same clock speed that our 2700X was running at, which is four gigahertz, I'm curious to see if the temperatures are going to be any different because it is a lower TDP chip. We're dealing with some thermal constraints here in a case this size, so it should be interesting to see how everything behaves. So why don't we get the CPU swapped in and conduct some quick testing. All right, so we've got our 2700 non-X installed now, running GTA 5 for about 15, 20 minutes at this point. This is the same game that I used to test CPU temps in part two. I should also mention ambient temps may have changed a degree or two. Bearing that in mind though, we are operating at 3.3 gigahertz on all eight cores right now, running bone stock on the CPU and the GPU for that matter. Now 3.3 gigahertz is 700 megahertz slower than our previous test on the 2700X, which was again operating at four gigahertz. So of course temperatures are gonna be quite a bit cooler and as you can see there in hardware info we are operating right now at about 60 degrees celsius which is uh, a whole 28 degrees cooler than the 88c we were experiencing earlier that being said like i mentioned earlier i do want to overclock this 2700 and get it back up to the same speed as our 2700x and see if we're still hitting 88c so let's go ahead and try it out Okay, so we're back at four gigahertz on all cores with a voltage of 1.38125. That was the first number that I sort of guesstimated uh, might be good to, to reach stability for this overclock. And so far we've been playing for half an hour without a single hiccup. However, our temperatures aren't doing so great. We're hitting 86C. I think we just got to 86C on the package, which is only just a hair cooler. If anything, a hair cooler, it's within variance of the 2700X at the same clock speed. So I'd like to go back into the BIOS at this point, fiddle around with our voltage some more and see if we can actually lower the temperatures without sacrificing stability. So um, there was a, a little bit here that, that I didn't get to record because the system crashed. I, I lowered the voltage a little bit too far. It was at 1.343 and the system crashed after about 10, 15 minutes of gameplay. Uh, so we had to actually scale up the voltage slightly to 1.35, and you can see here that we are getting back to that sort of 86, 87 degrees Celsius uh, range, which again, isn't ideal. So what this means is whether you have a 105 watt TDP 2700X or a 65 watt TDP 2700, if you're clocked at the same speeds, you will get around the same temperature and you'll need about the same amount of thermal dissipation in order to run that CPU effectively. I think what we should do is uh, not downclock it, but just lo rather lower our overclock to 3.8 gigahertz and, uh, and see what kind of voltage and, and temperature we can get away with that. All right, 3.8 gigahertz on all cores. Hold on, these guys are killing my vibe. Sorry, officer. So 3.8 gigahertz on all cores. Sorry, dude, you made me do it. 1.3 volts, and we're rock solid stable. I was doing some stability testing with an Ada, Ida 64, and wouldn't you know it, our temperatures have gone down by about seven degrees C. We are now floating at 78, 78.9, we'll call it a flat 79. I was secretly deep down, I think I was secretly hoping for uh, anything below 80 C, and we've just barely made that mark. So this is something I can live with, especially because the amount of performance drop off you'll see in game for most titles, going from four to 3.8 gigahertz, is gonna be pretty insignificant. Maybe one to 3%, 5% at most. All in all, these are probably the final settings that I'll be using for as long as I have this computer. Uh, speaking of computers, have you ever considered using a computer to build a website with Squarespace? Squarespace is a great platform that I actually use to build and run my merchandise store. Although the sky is really the limit for creating your online presence, even if that online presence is just a bunch of cat memes. There's also a lot of nifty built-in marketing tools and analytics so you can look at your data and be like, I'm crushing it, or I'm getting crushed by it and I should really switch it up. 
Creating a website on Squarespace is super easy, so I've never run into any issues. But if I did, it's good to know that I could always hit up their incredibly helpful and responsive 24 seven customer support. They've even won awards for being, well, incredibly helpful and responsive. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bitwit for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's gonna do it for now, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what your thoughts are on my PC here down in the comments below and feel free to toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon and I'll see you guys in the next video.